where there is self-control in our lives and we live according to the purity instructed in the word of God. But it doesn't end there. Notice it goes from there in verse 6 to perseverance, remaining strong through the struggles of life. Uh, let me see if you can identify this object. Anyone can tell me what that object is? Supposed to be a tea bag, yes. How could I find out what that tea tastes like? Well, maybe the next picture will help. You put it in a hot water, right? And all of a sudden you begin to realize, ah, this tastes good or it tastes bad. The real tea comes out when it's in hot water. And some people said Christians are that way. The real, the, the truth, the, what's Christian about you will come out when you're in hot water. The reason I'm so tender is that I'm in hot water all the time. And, uh, you know, but, but hot water brings out the tea. Hot water brings out what a Christian is really like. And he's talking here about going through the hot waters of life and being exposed to the, to the difficulties and the trials of life that really show who you are. And he's saying, you know, we've got to be people of perseverance. We just don't give up when things don't seem to be going our way or the trials come, but we remain strong because we're growing, our tree is growing, and we're becoming more and more like Christ. I like the story I've told you before, I believe, of the, of the pastor and his little son. They were out in the garage Son was about five years old, and the dad was working away, and he was pounding, and he, he got his thumb in the way, and he smashed his thumb with that hammer with all of his might, thinking he was going to hit the nail, and of course, whew, that hurt. And about 30 seconds after he hit that nail, his little boy left the garage crying, crying, weeping and wailing, running to his mother. And his mother said, what's wrong, what's wrong? He said, Daddy hit his thumb with the hammer. And she said, well, son, things like that happen. And, and you have to persevere. You have to be strong. When those things happen, you, you just need to laugh them off. And he said, oh, I did. That's why I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps the pastor needed more perseverance. But oftentimes like that, we go through rough times, and then we kind of lose our cool. But, but Peter's saying, you know, do you want to love? Not just puppy love, genuine love. Here's how you go about it. You begin with faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, and perseverance. And then, in verse 7, godliness. Well, that's a good question. What is faith? That was a difficult one to answer. But now, what is godliness? Think of that. Who is the most godly person that you know? Or in your mind, what would that person look like? What they were a godly person. You know, many people would, would say, well, it would be something like this person that I'm going to show you on the screen. It's someone who um, kind of isolates themselves from society, maybe goes up on the mountain, lives in a cave, and, uh, and just meditates and worships day and night. Just worships and worships, and this very godly person. If you study what godliness means, what you're looking at now is a picture of just the opposite of what godliness is. Godliness is described in our passage not by isolation, but by, by integration, by doing. And uh, it's a very practical thing. Practical Christianity would be a good title for godliness. It's simply practical Christianity. It's getting our hands dirty as we relate to one another, as we help one another, as we help those outside of the Christ. It's a practical Christianity. I like to kind of coin the phrase, where it's the outliving of the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, but godliness is letting the work of the Holy Spirit reach out and uh, out. We're going to live it out, what's happening in our lives, the outliving of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Peter makes it very plain, plain what this involves. The next two uh, characteristics really describe godliness. What is godliness? Number one, it's brotherly kindness, verse 7. It's uh, 
just being kind to one another in the body of Christ. If we can't be kind and love each other in the body of Christ, we're not going to be able to love the world. So here we have the idea of brotherly kindness, living together, working together as believers. Some of you heard my old poem that I learned years ago. It's about getting along with Christians, and it simply says, to live above with the Christians we love, that will be glory. Well, but to live here below with the Christians we know, that's another story. And it is, it's tough living with Christians sometimes, but the idea is brotherly love. And do notice that in the process here, brotherly love, loving one another in Christ, comes before loving the world. Because you'll notice, secondly, godliness is love, just plain agape love. It's at the end of the list, or really at the top of the list. Because if you begin with faith as the root and you work your way through, now we have a tree and we have the we have the fruit of the tree, which is, which is love. But it begins with the root. You're looking at a, a tree here that's very similar to a tree I had in my front yard years ago. And um, it was a lovely olive tree, but it was very messy and dirty olives all over the place, if you've ever had one, on the sidewalk, and it colored the sidewalk. And I wasn't, you know, didn't must have been great love with it, but it was an olive tree, and so I preserved it. But the roots were, were coming above the ground, as you might see there. And so I thought, you know, I will cut those roots on, on the ground, cut it down, maybe about six inches, eight inches, get rid of all those roots, put dirt there, and then plant grass, because the mower was always having a difficult time doing its job. And so one day I got my ax out, and I just started to work, and I started to chop all those roots uh, that were on top of the ground down for about six, eight inches. I started on one side and began working my way around. Hard work, hours. I finally got all those roots up almost to the other side, and guess what happened? The tree fell over. I didn't realize that the roots weren't hardly, and then when I found out, the roots were not more than a, a, a foot deep. How the thing ever stood up? Well, it stood up because its roots went way out on top of the ground. And as soon as those roots were cut away, the tree toppled over. The roots were not shallow. Compare that to the next picture, or the picture alongside this other tree. You see, when the roots are deep, the tree can stand. There's sort of a rule for most trees that the, the roots of the tree need to be at least as long as the tree, the branches are wide. And then it can take the storm. So as a Christian, you see, the storms are going to come, but if our roots are deep, then we will ultimately produce the fruit, which is love. And when people take a bite out of our fruit, it will be sweet and good, not sour, not negative. So the roots have to be deep. The branches of this tree would be love, and the roots here would be faith. And you see, people have a difficult, difficult time to love if the roots are not deep. And so the question would be, well, how deep are your roots today? And if they're deep and you have a healthy tree like that, what's the result? Verse 8, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The result is love. The result is increasing qualities like Jesus. So let me ask you, what's your love life like? How deep is your love today? How deep are your roots in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you love him? Do you love him with deep faith and goodness? Do you love him with your knowledge, self-control? Do you love him with perseverance and godliness? And are people seeing you Relate to them in the church with love, agape love. Does the world see that in you? Does it see it in me? Does it see it at Crossroads Church? Remember, we love him because he first loved us. Will you bow together as we prepare to go to the Lord's Supper today and be reminded of his love, that Jesus loved us and therefore we 
need to love others. Let's pray as we, we sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They thank you for loving us so much that you gave Jesus. Today we love him because he first loved us. Father, as we think about love today and we eat and drink together, may this be a good time to examine our own lives, to see where we are and what our tree is like, making sure that the tap root is deep in our Lord Jesus Christ and strong faith in him. So Lord, um, as we celebrate your love, help us to um, investigate our lives and make sure we're right with you. Thank you that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Through Christ we pray. As the men distribute the bread this morning, please take it and hold it and we'll all